Hey, what's up everyone, Bennett Profixer, and today on the channel, we're gonna be covering repair shop basics. We're gonna be going over the simple anatomy of an iPhone screen covering what the back plate does, where all the flexes go, and the best practices to handle it safely and carefully during a repair. Everything on my workbench, including this screen, is linked up in the description below. This particular screen, I picked it up from Injured Gadgets, it's one of their in-cell FX5 lines, which is incredibly close to OEM, and I would say almost indistinguishable but priced so much better than an original display. We use these all day long in our stores. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and please comment below what you'd like to see in future videos. Without further ado, let's take a closer look at this iPhone screen. Here in front of me on the bench, I have one of the FX5 in-cell screens from Injured Gadgets. This is an incredibly awesome display. And we're not gonna be going over the specifics about in-cell in particular, but just about safe handling and kind of what all the parts do on the device so that you kind of know a little bit more. The reason why we decided to make this video was I actually got a call from someone and they asked me, the plastic film on the screen, do I peel it off? Or what do I do in this particular corner? They were asking seemingly basic questions, but there was so much curiosity and so much unknowing behind those that it stemmed this particular series. So to get started, we wanted to cover some of the basics on this particular screen. Um, with this particular one and most other replacement screens, they're gonna come with this particular guard at the bottom. This guard is gonna be what protects the two little legs at the bottom. Um, basically to prevent them from being folded in, from scratching anything else. Um, essentially, you can pull that off and discard it right away whenever doing a screen repair. At the top of the device, you're going to have the ear speaker mesh. It does have adhesive behind it. To reveal the adhesive, you have this lobe on the left-hand side. Um, whenever you lift it up, you can actually grab that lobe itself, which assists you in pulling it up, and it will reveal the little bit of adhesive that will hold your microphone in place. You always want to remove this before repair or else your microphone won't be able to hear properly through it. And as well, your front camera flex won't adhere properly and will kind of be loose and making it very difficult um, to put the screws in and to position your speaker uh, during the repair. Things to take note of is going to be the proximity sensor hold. Here at the top there is a plastic holder that holds the proximity sensor in place. Essentially, you want to be able to hold this up and be able to see the two little eyeballs that see through the screen and ensure that the square is positioned properly you know, within those. Um, if it's a little bit off or crooked, it could cause issues with your proximity sensor. Sometimes it is pretty difficult to peel these up. However, if you do have a plastic tool, sometimes you can push on them and kind of work them off the screen and then re-glue them back in place. The camera hold is the same way. You wanna make sure that it is actually aligned properly. A lot of these screens that we're getting, it, everything's aligned properly. However, sometimes things do slip through the cracks and you do have to align those. So always be on the lookout for those. If you're having proximity sensor issues after repair, it could either be one of two things normally. It's either gonna be the front flex is damaged, causing it to not communicate properly with the phone itself, or it's not properly aligned and it prevents the little eyeballs of the proximity sensor from seeing directly through the glass, causing it to not work as it should. The front speaker mesh actually has a grommet around it. This serves the purpose of holding the speaker in place. If you look at the back side of an ear speaker, you'll notice that it does have a little protrusion. That protrusion fits within the little rubber grommet, and the little rubber grommet has a little bit of stretch and tolerance to allow it to fit smoothly in there. Moving down the device, you'll see the metal bracket, or the mid plate that covers the backlight. If we pull this off, we can reveal the flexes underneath. Now, during repair, there's really no reason to pull this off, but I'm just pulling this off for demonstration purposes um, to show you. And as you notice, as I'm pulling these screws out, the only place that I'm putting any kind of pressure on is the bezel itself. You wanna ensure that you're not putting any undue pressure on the actual back of the LCD. So as I'm holding it, I'm holding it on the bottom part of the bezel, and then also on the top up here, ensuring that I'm not pushing on any of the corners of the LCD. The LCD on iPhones are gonna be glass. They're very easy to damage if you push on them too hard, and so we wanna prevent that and put our hands in a place where we're not gonna cause any damage to any of the new parts that are coming in. So now that we've pulled all those out, all these side screws are identical in length. We can pull off this back bracket. Lifting it up carefully, we can then see the two flexes underneath. 
One of the common areas where iPhones are damaged during a repair, especially if it's for a battery repair and not necessarily a screen, is the home button flex cable. The home button flex cable has a little bend in it. Whenever it's lifted up too high, it basically pulls this out of the device and causes a tear to occur right here in the elbow. That will cause your home button to not click anymore and could cause other issues depending on how severed it is. Whenever dealing with flexes like this on an iPhone screen, you always want to make sure that you keep them bent how they should be. If they came pre-bent, don't bend them all the way backwards and really try not to move them as much as possible. Because if you do, it can actually weaken the flex or cause it to become defused from the touch panel itself and then you'll have display issues or touch panel issues. Now these right here, naturally they kind of lift up, so that's okay, but whenever we put the back uh, bracket back in place, we want to make sure that we're careful and push them down and don't apply any hard pressure along the edge of the LCD. Because if we do, it could cause them to become defused and then you're going to have a screen that has some kind of malfunction or glitch in some way. Whenever you place this back on the device, what you can do is you can hold down um, you know, a flex in a safe area, just determine that depending on the particular device that you're working on, and lay this back panel back in place. And then when we're installing the screws, if you have a screen that doesn't come with the back panel, I recommend leaving your screen on the table itself and then aligning those little screw holes and then screwing them in. And once again, place your fingers in an area that you're not gonna be placing any pressure on the back of the LCD. Carefully install these on the rest of the back plate. One thing to note though is be careful with your flexes. You don't want to pull on these or move them in any way except what is natural for them to basically lay as they are. Um, so whenever you have them underneath the back plate, make sure they're actually lined up and then make sure that when you put your back plate on that you're not pinching them in any, um, in any way causing any kind of stress on them. And one of the things that I'm doing on this particular back plate is I am holding up the the little lobe here. I'm not putting any kind of pressure on the back side of the LCD, just on the little standoff and pushing towards my screwdriver to um, ensure that I'm not twisting the frame in. All right, now that we have those all back in place, everything's back as it should be. When transporting one of the replacement screens, you always want to be careful. Never pick it up by its flexes and never just grab it you know, on the LCD itself. I always hold it, you know, like this, pretend it's like an old school CD that you're trying not to scratch and hold it just with your fingers around the edge. It sounds kind of extreme. However, you won't have to worry about ever damaging a screen or having one become damaged in question and wondering if it was you, if you're holding it properly. Always when laying these down as well, I always lay them glass side down onto a clean workbench, ensuring that there's no glass or debris underneath there because we don't want to cause any kind of damage to the glass itself. So just be very careful. Um, of course, you could actually grab the LCD, but you just don't want to put any undue stress and it's always the safest practice to hold around the edges when transporting it and moving it around the device itself. I appreciate everyone that's watching this video. Like I mentioned earlier, everything on my workbench is linked up in the description below. I hope these tips help you out in your workshop to more carefully handle screens and move them around and understand the important areas of the screen itself. I appreciate everyone that's still watching, and if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, and please comment below what you'd like to see in future videos. And as well, everything on my workbench is linked up in the description below. And if you like this particular training and you would like us to personally teach you and your repair shop how to better your workflows and to increase your knowledge on repairs like micro soldering, check out the link in the description below. We have a fully online mentored repair course where we teach you all about soldering and all about how to increase and better your workflows in your store to not only just turn more screwdrivers, but to turn more profit. That is our ultimate goal with starting ProFixer. And so if you check out the link in the description below, you can learn more about how we can guide you through this mentored process through our online courses. And I would love to take you through that whole process and see a repair shop transformation for you. But once again, my name is Ben from ProFixer and I'll see you in the next video.